Hello and welcome to Crip Buzz. Elisa Healy in her 150th T20 International match. She's actually the first Australian male or female to reach that milestone. Had the luck of the coin as she won the toss and decided to put India in. Again, Shafali Verma and Smriti Mandana were able to get starts, but they just couldn't go on. A little bit of fireworks at the end got India to their highest score in this series, 147. Then it was the Australian openers, Elisa Healy and Beth Mooney, that steered the ship to enable Australia to win quite comfortably seven wickets with eight balls to spare. It's great to see Shafali Verma back in form, 26 off 17, strike rate of 152. Just want her to go on, but this is still good signs. India were in a good position, 60 for one, but then they lost three for six. So that seems to be a problem that they're losing wickets in clumps. Then Richa Gosh, wow. She uh, has a bit of firepower at the end, doesn't she? You almost get a sense, you just want to see her up the order a little bit more. The reason why India kind of didn't get to a higher total is because Annabelle Sutherland, two for 12, and Georgia Wareham, two for 24, combined nicely again to really squeeze the Indian middle order and the middle overs of that innings. And then finally, the highlight was Elisa Healy and Beth Mooney combining nicely, 85 run opening stand. They were the ones that laid down the platform for an easy victory for the Australian side. Player of the match was Annabelle Sutherland, two for 12, but I want to focus on Elisa Healy. Since the retirement of Meg Lanning, she has been given the reins of this Australian side, and I wanted to see how she would go. Um, she's coming back off a, a terrible injury with her hand, um, but she managed to do extremely well under extreme amount of pressure and on conditions that are certainly foreign to the Australian side. Um, down and out probably with some runs, um, but she's never that far away from it. And in her 150th T20 International, she capped it off nicely. It was so good to see her be as aggressive as she normally is. Anything short, she pulled with freedom and, and got value for her money. And then to be able to go over the offside just shows you that she's back to her best form. So Elisa Healy was my standout player. For India, they'll walk away from this T20 series a little bit disappointed, and they should be because they started off extremely well in winning the first one, and then Australia fought back. The problem is it seems to be a similar story. Starts for the top order, but no one really going on. And there seems to be a bit of an issue in the middle order. Harman Kaur unfortunately didn't make double figures throughout this entire series and hopefully she'll get some time in domestic cricket to be able to get back or, and the WPL. Uh, we know that she is a key performer for India and she needs to find some runs. Uh, I think maybe some lessons learned. Richa Gosh batting as low as she is, maybe five. Maybe she can come in at that number three position just to keep that momentum going. And Puja Vastrika, she batted at eight got to find a position for her probably at six. She's got too much firepower to be sitting that low. Uh, and I think India can utilize her a little bit better. Well, just when you think the players will rest and recover, no, it's back to more cricket. The Indian domestic 50 over competition is going on at the moment. So I would expect a number of the Indian players, if they're all fit and firing, to go back into that tournament and get some time. And for the Australian side, well, they've got a couple of weeks off and then they take on South Africa here in Australia in the multi-format series. And then we don't have to wait too much longer for the second edition of the WPL. It has been a great series against two quality sides and I hope you've enjoyed the coverage that Crick Buzz gives you.